This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. And this is April 2nd, 2023. This is a Sunday morning message. It is a part three. The separation of the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle. The separation of the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle. Now we've exhausted the Ark. We saw it move it's in the two previous lessons. It moved. Now, if God didn't want them to move it, the priests, they'd all died as soon as they touched and tried to move it. I had to flip over again and something would have happened. So, he let them move it. They lost the battle still, showing I'm not with you. Uh, this is what saints do. We study more, which is what we're supposed to do. Pray more, we're supposed to do that. Do more good deeds, you're supposed to do that. You still have to get rid of the sin in you. You can't do it. God has to do it. He's not going to remove it from you if you don't let him remove it from you. You've got to want it gone. And your part must be done in removal. That's a part you must do. David had to purchase for an extremely large amount of money a threshing floor area to build an altar, have the uh, animal sacrifice, and he was still scared to go to the temple. See, one thing you have to understand, brethren, is David could see that that angel had his sword drawn standing there. That's, you don't need to see that. You need to know it exists. If God is angry with you, that's a problem. But David could see it. Onan and his uh, children saw it. Okay? David was scared to go to the tabernacle, which will be called a temple from time to time. Because he saw the angel. Why? Because he knows he'll kill me. So he would say, well, yeah, he making a sacrifice. Now, that doesn't fix it. You got to wait till the process of the Lord is complete. And when the angel gets out the way, then you can go. I don't, I don't think people are understanding. And it's sad when we get caught up in foolish works on earth. Brethren, this is the idea. You... You can't let your mind get caught up in superficial man-made works. Pastor's anniversaries, Minister Appreciation Day, things like that. Getting involved with po politicians in the sense of, you know, like letting them come and speak at the church gathering on Sunday for votes, whatever the thing may be. You're getting involved with car washing and foolishness like that. Your mind doesn't understand that's a call to work and now it blocks your spiritual comprehension. Anybody can wash a car, man. They let you wash it free if you buy enough gas. My goodness, let's get real with the thing. But your mind gets blocked. David is looking and he knows long as that angel is there with that sword drawn, he's going to kill me. You know, that's why the Bible says he's afraid. It's not because he's overly righteous. He knows he's going to kill me because he's mad at me. He's mad at me. And I can't go to the temple. I can't go to the tabernacle. I can't go to the building. That's a problem. And you got to understand that. That shouldn't be with David, the great king. But when you do ignorant, blissful, foolish sins, God is angry. Now, now, now you know, I'm going to say something. You can't outdance Israel. You can't outdance Israel. You can't outdrink, can't out eat, can't out party Israel on a spiritual level. That's God's people. You can do what they did, or maybe because of the joy of Christianity, you could. I'll say that. But they knew how to celebrate to the Lord. And they were lost. They were happy. You could say, well, there go the ark, there go the offerings. But the Lord was angry. It is what you're doing in sin that makes him angry. And he let you know in his word, you're making me angry. This beat-based singing in the church of Christ. These guys with these mics making these noise. And you know, you know if he went before anybody else talking like that on a job interview, they would laugh him and call the police. Because he's not, those are not intelligent words. Your brethren are becoming ungood. That's why they locked the buildings up. You would have never thought that. They just like Hezekiah's daddy. You have to understand something, brother. You gotta look at this and see it say. I thank God it's not me. Because it could be. Thank God he's let me see. You got to be able to get that. So, having said that, 
Now we want to look at a few scriptures on the tabernacle. How the tabernacle traveled. What made it travel in the sense of we know it was moved. We don't know all the details. Some people try to guess. We don't know all the details, brethren, on why it moved. But we do see it move. Once again, like we studied tonight, understanding the secret spiritual things you don't know. That's what God wants to reveal to you. He wants to reveal that thing to you. And that's what you want to look at. I want to validate to you, as I told you I would, the tabernacle was also called the actual temple. The same word that's going to be used for Solomon's temple. Let's validate that. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 9. Now this is Shiloh. We know this is the beginning. And it's going to be called the temple then. This is not a clerical error by the uh, scribe or the writer. As we discussed in previous lesson about some errors we saw in the Bible. This is a bona fide statement toward the tabernacle. It's 1 Samuel 1, 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. And after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. H. 1964. A large public building such as a palace or a temple. And you will see this word here is going to be the same word that is applied to the temple in 2 Kings 18 and 16. Same word there. 2 Kings 18 and 16. At that time, did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple? That's the one Solomon built of the Lord. And from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, said, had overlaid and gave to the king of Assyria. All right. So now, let's make sure we keep our mind focused. So what well, we're studying understanding, detailed critical study for us to understand words are used this way. Because it is a temple, it is a palace, place of words, but it is a movable temple called the Tabernacle of Moses. Okay, because he orchestrated his building. He did not build it by himself. In a sense, he did not do things in it by himself, but it is called of Moses to give identity. As we can see, it's inferred to give identity because it's not his. Okay, so now, let's move forward. Now, one of the things we want to understand, brethren, is that the Lord did a lot of things in teaching Israel. He showed them physical things. The reason being is because he wanted them to understand and keep into their mind the comprehension of doing what he said. How to put the drapes up in the tabernacle. Where should the table go? How should your life be? You have to learn from that. See, you just want to read that. And say, okay, you know, the Lord don't care where I'm at or what I say or what I do. Yes, he does. See, that's how you go to hell. Fooling around with wicked, weak saints or denominational people. Talking about Jesus with a Bible. As again, you saw a man killed with sticks, picking up, and a man killed a man but was allowed to live. David. You can't explain that in any type of reasoning. Because God is just. How is that just? Because God reads the heart. He knows Who's going to listen to him? Who's not? Now you may say, well, I'm going to listen to him, but you don't know. You can't prove it. Your actions show you wicked. You can't be like that, nor can I. So people will come to you in the church and tell you what you're doing right or wrong. Brethren spend a lot of years and a lot of times playing around with God, and then they die, and they die lost. And that's what we don't want to do. So what we're learning is to do a forensic, spiritual forensic check on what should we say about this building. Now, so let's go into it ourselves to prove this. Okay. Now, look at, if you will, as we know, we see our text, uh, Second Chronicles. Let's look at chapter number six. First Chronicles, excuse me. First Chronicles 1639. Again, me. First Chronicles 1639. 
Now, let's see what this says. First Chronicles 16:39. And Zadok the priest and his brethren, the priests, before the tablet of the law and the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer to burnt, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offerings continually, morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. Sometimes it's called the law of Moses, sometimes the law of the Lord. So when, when the seven day event is trying to make a play on this word, this is not even the Ten Commandments. The instruction about the tabernacle is not the Ten Commandments. But it's called the law of the Lord. See, you just see, see, I want to say this in the proper way for us to understand it with love. Brethren, their souls are lost. When a blind man try to lead you and you put blinders on, you think you're not eventually gonna go into a ditch. That's ditches all over the earth. You cannot walk the earth without going into a ditch at some point. You have to have ditches. Some are natural, some are man-made. That's what the law means. So you understand, you cannot walk a journey on the earth continually in any direction without running to a ditch eventually. That's where they're going to lead you. This soul is lost. Good person, give you their last, if they can spread, lost. So you guard yourself when you have a spiritual conversation, when you have a physical conversation, you can listen. Because now they may say something to you that can help you physically. The important thing is understanding is there's a separation here of where this place originally began and where it has gravitated to at this point. This is where it's going to stay. It's never going to be moved from Gibeon anymore. Solomon's going to build a temple and that's it. Obviously, it's not going to be allowed to be used anymore. And you got to go to the temple. Now, so let's look at this some more. Okay, now we're going to understand some history behind this. Let's do a timeline search. It starts in Shiloh. Joshua 18.1. Let's do that. Watch how easy this is to see when you have all the things before you. Now, we said this before. We're going to re redo a recap. And the whole congregation of Israel, Joshua 18.1, assembled together at Shiloh. And set up the tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was to do before them. All right. Joshua 18, 1. Then it is moved and we find it in Nob. Look at 1 Samuel 21. Now you're not going to find no explanation why it moved. You're just going to know it's moved. Now somebody going to try to say why. That's why you're going to have trouble. 1 Samuel 21. Then came David to Nob to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David. And said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? Look at verse 2. And David said unto him, Ahimelech, the priest, the king had commanded me a business, and had said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. He says, And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants, to such and such a place. Now therefore what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in, uh, in mine hand. Or what there is present. Why? They have to eat. You will die if you don't eat. Okay? They have to figure out how to get food. God is protecting them from Saul. But he's not going to tell no grown man how to get food. Unless there's a famine like he did. He lies about some birds bring you something. So he got to figure out how to eat. No taste. We got a lot of men on the earth that don't want to work. Especially of the younger persuasion. I my young men at work. God bless all of them. Because you got a lot of young men on the earth. I'm going to drop this. This is what we do. We make it relevant. That don't know how to go get bread. Without robbing. You can't get them to work. You got babies. You can't get that rascal to work. And you keep stuffing food in his mouth when you need to dry it up. Let him know if you don't work, you don't eat. Let him leave the church. He's not acceptable anyway. The Lord already told Paul, right. Right. I don't accept him. Go to work, man. 
Get a job. Verse 4. The priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand. What does that mean? Okay, we're going we're gonna to look at this. Now look at this. There is bread made for the priest to eat. Once they make fresh bread, because they change it out and lay it out, then they can just eat that as common. Now watch what he's going to say. There's no common bread on my hand, but there is hollow bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women, and David answered the priest and said of him, of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessel of the young men are holy. And the bread is in a man of common, yea, though it was sanctified this day in the vessel. See, David knows it was sanctified, but it's in a man of common. But it's still the priest's bread. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread that, that but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord. To put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. So you put hot bread down when you take it away. You say, okay, well, we don't have that yet. Now, a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day detained before the Lord. And his name was Dueg, an Edomite, always been an enemy. The chief of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. That's the type of man Saul is. Got an Edomite right there. And David said unto Himelech, and that, and is there not here under thine hand, spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapon with me because the king's business required haste and the priest said the sword of Goliath the Philistine whom thou sawest in the valley of Elah behold it is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod thou will take that take it but there is no other save that here David said there is none like that give it me and David rose and fled that they for fear saw and went to Achish the king of Gad Okay, so now David is on the run from Saul. Now you may say, well, how you know this is the tabernacle here? And they're not at the ark at this time, which is separate. Okay, well, this is how we're going to prove it. See, brethren, you know, it takes time to do this kind of stuff. You have to invest time to speak intelligent on the word of the Lord. That's why I say, well, does that really matter? It matters. When you try to say, well, there's a tabernacle and a temple, because there was a lesson that the Lord had separated, and it was going to be, and they were sad about it, because he said it shows, I got a problem with the way y'all been conducting yourself. Then this guy takes over Saul, and he becomes a bad head, and you still got the Lord's anger. David's been anointed, the new king, but not yet will he take the throne. And so we want to keep these things alive. Why? Because there's lessons here. That show whose God is mad at and who he's not. Your brethren run around there doing foolish and saying foolish things. Yeah, God mad at them. And they right next to you. But he's still mad at them. You have to let them know he's not pleased with your lifestyle and the way you teach the gospel. So, now let's find something out here. Uh, this identification is marked by Leviticus 24. Let's go to verse 24. Look at verse 1. Leviticus 24 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, command the children of Israel, that they bring unto thee pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamps to burn continually. Without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation. Sometimes called the tabernacle of the congregation. And we see it. Shall Aaron order it from the evening until the morning before the Lord continually? It shall be a statue for every your generation. So we want to know, okay, this light must be burning the church of Christ too. Continually. The light of Christ forever. Because this is what we need to understand. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So his light must shine bright in your heart, in your mouth, in your lifestyle before the saints. He says, he shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. And thou shalt take fine flour, watch the cakes, and bake twelve cakes thereof. Two tenth deals shall be in one cake, not six, but twelve. 
two tenth deals, not six tenth deals, two. And thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. It shall be Aaron's and his sons. They shall eat it in the holy place, but it's most holy unto him. By the offering of the Lord made by fire, by a perpetual statue. Now, so you don't see the seven day of Venice doing that, do you? See, look at that. That's so why you got to see, see now when you tell him that, you say, well, we don't do it. Say, so, well, okay, why, why, why don't you do it anymore? Why not? It's a Sabbath. See, and you know what bothers me? Jesus, help us all. You let somebody like that turn your heart against Christ. As Brother Hamlet used to say, a spiritual imbecile. You know what an imbecile would be? An individual, when you say, hey, I want a glass of ice water. He'll take the water, fill it up to the top, and try to put ice in it. See, instead of putting the ice in there first, and then put the water. And as he keeps putting more ice, it just keeps spinning. And, and well, I mean, fill up again, put some more ice. Fill up again, and he sees an imbecile. That's what people are who are spiritually... Not in tune with the Lord. He cannot grab it. And you'll look there and let him tell you something about Jesus that will mess you up with the Lord. How's that possible? Would you keep trying to help that guy put ice in a full glass of water? So you can see that. Because that's not how you make ice water. We know that. It's not going to work. You can have a glass full with ice in it if you put the ice first and then put the water in it will fill up every time and not spill. So you have to understand in your mind is that brethren speak intelligently on the word of God. We understand by this, this was at the tabernacle. This was done at the tabernacle because it had to be at the tabernacle. Now when you see they are doing this at Nob, oh, the tabernacle is in Nob. You cannot deny it. Now, that's how you prove a scriptural point. That's how you do it, brother. Because they are definitely doing service at the ark, but not this. Something different going on at the ark of the covenant. That's how you know they're still separate. That's how you know you still got this going on. Because why you want to explain how God will separate holiness identification in your life if you disrespect him and get involved with other deities family a family can be your deity your pastor reverend doctor even in the church of christ that doctor can be your deity the doctor these preachers with the title doctor that's christ's title so we understand that point okay now let's let's get some more information here there is an incident that's going to go on that's going to cause problems in the kingdom of God and so we've seen it's at now now we want to validate while it being at now here's the timeline it moves from Shiloh to now we see and then we're going to watch it's going to be filed somewhere else a different place and this is what you and I want to understand because God is allowing this whole tabernacle to be moved he's already moved the ark he's allowed the whole tabernacle itself to be moved and we have to accept that and understand this is a it's a following of a timeline that all this can come together in our minds to make sense so we understand that from reading first chronicles which we read let's go to chapter 16 again and let's go to verse 1 let's go to first chronicles 16 and verse 1 so it's at now something's going to happen there and then we're going to find it somewhere else first chronicles 16 1 
So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifice and peace offering before God. Look at, if you will, verse 37. So he left the, there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord Asaph and his brethren to a minister before the ark continually as every day's work required. Verse 38. Obed Edom with their brethren. Three score and eight. Obed Edom also the son of Jethutham and Hosea to be porters. And then we get to verse 39 where we read. Showing the ark is separate. And Zach the priest and his brethren the priest. Before the tabernacle of the Lord. And the high place that was at Gibeon. You notice now now it's at Gibeon. You see the transportation. It is at Gibeon. Now one of the things I understand brethren. Is that. Saul is going to become king. 1 Samuel 10 and 19. Let's go back here. We're going to see when he becomes king. 1 Samuel 10 and 19. God's going to give him all he needs. God's going to give you all you need to make it. You just got to do what he says. 1 Samuel 10 19. And you have this day rejected your God, Samuel tells them, who himself saved you out of all your adversaries and tribulation. And you have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. See, this is where the problem start. Even David, as good as he was, got many of them killed and slaughtered behind foolish thoughts he had. Got Nathan in trouble, talking about building a temple himself. Nathan, un unwise, not going to God, asks, can he do this? Tells him, do it. God has to rebuke him. Now, therefore, present yourself before the Lord by your trials and by your thoughts. He's going to select. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near him, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. So now this is Samuel picking their first king by the power of God telling him. When they had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was taken and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Okay, now he picks him and they can't find him. Just like a, just like a hireling. Look at verse 22. Therefore they inquired the Lord further. If the man should yet come hither or thither. And the Lord answered. Behold, he had hid himself among the stuff. Now he's hiding. You see? Here you king. Hiding. You got a lot of brethren that do this. They hide. Hide behind superficial foolish works. But will not address what the church needs. Understand how to prove points in the Bible. Not going to show you how to prove it. He's going to tear it down and that's it. And you're going to go, the Bible confused. I don't understand. That's because he, he's not telling you how to handle it. Or either you're not paying attention, one of the two. Something's wrong. Verse 23. And they ran and fetched him thence. When he stood among the people, he was higher than any other people. I mean, shows, oh, he was, he's the tallest guy there. And Samuel said to all the people, see ye him whom the Lord had chosen. See, the Lord chose him. That there is not like him among people. All the people. All the people shouted and said, God save the king. And Samuel told the people the man of the kingdom. And wrote it in the book. See that? There it is. And laid up, for, uh, up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away. Every man to his house. And Saul was sent home to Gibeah. That's his place. There went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. You see how God touched their heart? He touched their heart to serve this guy and work with him. But the children of Eli said, how shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no present. But he held his peace. Look at the wisdom of Saul. He didn't say that. Now the sons of Bilal are right about this guy. This is one time they're right. It's like a broke clock. Twice is right every day. But they're right. But the point is, is they're wrong in their heart. Because they just don't like him because he's with God. Remember the sons of Eli. But they're going to give themselves to the service of David. Uh, David is a different guy. David, they're going to be trouble for him, but they know, okay, this guy really is of God. They go to war, but they're like a fool when you come back. That's like saints that will tell you, 
first repentance, confession, and baptism, when it comes time to worship, they're going to act a fool with you. David has to always wrestle with the sons of Belial. You have sons of Belial in the church of Christ. They're in the church of Christ. They will never leave. Every congregation got somebody there. You just have to battle against them. They're always going to bring in superficial works that have no spiritual impact that will distract you. You know why you trip when you're walking? Because you become distracted. You've been walking for years. You've got your mind on something. Or something gets your attention, a sound, and you trip on a little rock. And you look all day. That's what you tripped on, the little bitty rock. Because you lift your foot just a little too low. Not high enough. That's what distractions do. And that trip that you do that may make you fall or may make you look embarrassed in spirituality, that's a sin. You say or do something that now you got to explain. Because somebody may say, are you okay after you fall like that? You go, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Watch it. You, sometimes you fall. I, I fell one day and tore up a nice pair of jeans. Oh, man, my mama didn't get mad at me. Scrape my leg. She was more concerned about the scrape. But I felt bad. And I told you, nice jeans. I was a kid. Man, I felt bad. You know. But, you know, she said, I don't worry about that. You know. Fix my leg up. But if that was a sin, that's a sin. You ripped. Now, that was a towel now. Got to be repaired. Wound got to be healed. See, the Lord used these things to teach us. Understand. That's why you hear the word, you shall never fall. If you fall like that spiritually, man, you know you're in trouble with the Lord. Ain't going to be no wiping and kissing the boo-boo or to say like that, you know, because, you know, kiss, you know, make it better. No, that, with the Lord, that's going to be a whole nother world here. So this is where we have to end, because that's physical. With the Lord, it's spirit. So you will never fall. He said you can get a wound. The Lord say it's a festering wound. I don't know if you've ever had a wound that will not heal. You have to go to the doctor. Some doctors can't heal the wound. There's a place called the wound, W-O-U-N-D, center. That's who they send you to when the doctor goes, man, we didn't try it all. Now, when you get there, they tell you, we got it, and they close the door. You roll up out of that, as Lord will, your leg is in shape. But you got to go there because they specialize in medicine. That's all they do is deal with wounds. They don't fix no broke on it. They deal with wounds. Festering sores that will not help their specialists. Well, the rest of the doctors are tough for that, man. We put all the stuff we know on it. Send them to the wound center. They put you in water and all kind of stuff. They all got it. That's what happens when you get yourself involved with sin. You can't go to everybody to fix it. You got to go to people that specialize in food and you don't pull it up. That used to hear, and I slept with my sister. You know, we had a baby now. And we both came from the same mama's womb. The baby's sick now. You know, and the family's up. You got, you can't go, what? What? And fall to pieces. You're not strong enough. Send that to another leader, man. You can't handle that. They specialize in that. And yeah, I raped, I raped my cousin yesterday. What? You can't go to pieces? So you got to understand. Uh, why don't you go talk to Brother Sansa? He can help with that. And you know, because this is, this is heavy. And you have to understand that, brethren. So if you want to deal with difficult cases, you have to prepare yourself. You have to know where the scriptures that deal with that. Everybody's not going to deal with that. This guy's more interested in washing cars and having cakes. He run around there giving out balloons and candy. He's the preacher, which is nothing wrong with any of that. But when a hard case hit him, he can't handle it, man. He can, it make him be ready to lead a church after he hears no case. So you have to understand that, brother. I'm encouraging you to know, brethren, everybody not strong in the church. I'm sorry to tell you that. And that's not God's fault. So let's get some more here. So now we understand Saul is the king. But what is one of the things that Saul is going to do? Saul is going to show himself, 1 Samuel 21, that he, he is in trouble. 1 Samuel 21. And this is what you want to understand why why. They wanted a king. This is who God gave him. God didn't set him up. He's the best guy they got. So 1 Samuel uh, chapter uh, number 21. We see David. We've just read. Went to Ahimelech. 
the temple is in? No, we proved that. So let's pick up where we left off from reading verse number 10. And David arose and fled that day after for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. Now this is something you don't want to do. And the servant of Achish said to him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did not they seem one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul had slain his thousand, and David his ten thousand? And David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So he heard them talking, so he's scared now. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrambled on the door of the gate and let spittle fall upon his beard. See, because they got him and said, well, you know, he's trying to come up here for refuge. Then the key said unto the servants, Lo, you see the man is mad? Why for then have you brought him to me? Have I need of a madman? That you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Say, this fellow come into my house? David therefore departed from this and escaped to the cave of Dulum. And when his brethren and all his father had heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt, watch this, and everyone that was discontented, got themselves unto him. Look who David took. Everybody that was broke, <laughs> everybody that was discontented, got themselves in, and the captain came over them, and there were with him over 400 men. Do you see David's army? Do you see the message? Jesus is a king greater than David. Jesus is the great king. Jesus takes broke folks. Broke, man, you like broke, broke, bankrupt. You know, all kind of drama. He takes people who are discontented. Let's look at that word, discontented. Uh, why is this saying? This is part of the lesson to understand, brethren. There's a reason things are not right in the land. You got a person who is not acting right. And so what do you do with him? You, you don't do you do you join with him? Do you just say, well, you know, this is the best we got, we gotta do what we gotta do? Or do you Change and do what the Lord said. Discontented. H315. Uh, this particular word deals with, man, this is a very unusual word. Properly a breathing. Uh, whether you're vital, whether it's an animal, uh, figuratively. Now watch what it's compa compared with bitter. H4751. Bitterness. Angry, you know, you're breathing, you, 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 it's like you mad, man. You ever seen a, like, you know, <sighs> man, you know, like you mad. You know, even dogs get like that when they get angry. <sighs> they breathe, you ever watch a dog when he's mad? <sighs> Discontent, I'm mad, man, that's why the animal, the animal gets the same way. The word means that, the animal gets the same way. Discontent, I'm mad, man. Stupid song. So they gather themselves to David. Broke folks. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab and said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them for the king of Moab. Now remember, these Moabites. Remember, these are the people that got Israel in trouble. Now watch, watch what happened. And they dwelt with him. All the while the day was in the hole. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hole. Depart and get into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Arec. So God sent the servant saying, No, nah, you can't stay here. He's going to get you. See, he's delivering him out of Saul's hand. People are angry. Got to go all the way to Moab. Saul is on a tail to find David. He says in verse 6, when Saul heard that David was discovered and the men that was with him, now Saul abode in Gibeah under a tree in Ramah, having a spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto the servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give you one of your fields and vineyards and make you all count a thousand? 
and cows and honey. He's, so he's offering gifts. Now, this is what saints do. Wicked church leaders, they offer gifts. Is he going to make you an elder? Are you going to be the next preacher? I can help you. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. If you say the right thing, you could be great in the church and go straight to hell. You'll say many souls, but you're not going to make it. Why is that? Because the Lord is saying, I can't save you. You're not with me. You know, I know you're not. Because other people are not going to do what you do when you baptize them. Verse 8. That all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that showed me that my son had made a lead with the son of Jesse. See, he found out Jonathan is down with David. And there is none of you that is sorry for me or showed unto me that my son had stirred up my servant against me to lie wait at this day. Now, this sounds good if you was a good king, but you're a crook. God going to kill him. and now he's going to desecrate him. He's going to let the Philistines cut his head off and nail it and die against him. You know they're not going to get that head back. <laughs> God said, that's why I didn't show him no mercy. Man, God don't let that happen to the king. Then answer Dueg, the Edomite, which was sent over the servants of Saul. He got an Edomite like this guy over the servants of Saul. One of these types of people. And I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nahal to Abimelech, the son of uh, Hittub. And inquired, he says, of the Lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king went to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all the father's house, the priest that were not, and that came all to the king. He called all the priests together. Remember, this is where the tabernacle is. And Saul said, Here now, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And said unto him, Why have you conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, and that thou hast given me bread and a sword, given him bread, forgive me, and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait? As at this day. Then Ahimelech answered the king and said. And who was so faithful among all the servants as David. Which is the king's son-in-law. And God that's not bidding. And it's honorable in that house. He's telling him I didn't know. Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be far from me. Did not the king impute anything unto his servant. See that's what he's telling him. I didn't go to God about him to set him up against you. Now that's some Saul assume. Not to all the house of my uh, of my uh, father, for thy servant knew nothing of all this less and more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Hamlet, thou and all thy father's house. Let's stop a minute. This is a learning point. This is a dog. You just saw the picture of a spiritual dog. That's why God cut his head off. That's why he's marked as damned and cursed in Sheol. You know why? Because the man told you I didn't know that. When somebody tell you they know something, brother, that's going to be you. If somebody told you, I didn't know that. Shut your mouth. And I'm going to shut my mouth. Because you're going to go to hell. You know, you know how many times I've had people tell me, I didn't know that. I, I go, right. I'm not going to hell. I don't know about you. I hope it won't be you. I go, okay. I don't care if he lied or she. I didn't know that. All right. So you not. I'm clean. Church of Christ, Church of Christ, Church of Christ. That don't mean nothing to God if his son has not signed you up. Inside, you just talk. it's just another denominational church. You just don't have answers. The Greek Orthodox never use that. The Catholic take the Lord's up every Sunday. Are they the Lord's church? So don't stop picking and choosing, chair picking righteousness. One thing you gotta understand, my dear brethren, this is a dog. A priest told you, a child of God. I didn't know. Me and lie. So what? But you a liar, Saul. Your life is a lie. A, a, a origami king. Paper mache spiritual. So look what happens. I just tell him you're going to die. And your father's are. Now you're blaming the man's house for something that if he would have did, it just should be him that died. And the king said unto the footman that stood by him, Turn and slay the priest of the Lord, because their hand also is with David. 
Now they're trying to catch David to kill him, like Saul told him, but they're not going to kill a priest. And because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put their hand to fall upon the priest of the law. Now this right here, I always remember this verse, when somebody tell you people were scared of David, let me tell you something, man, Joab told David, man, look here, I hope something worse happened to you if you don't go out here and thank these people for saving you from Absalom. That boy was going to cut your throat. He doesn't fear God like that. Listen, nobody is that afraid of a king, whether you're good or bad. There's not, no, one's, no one's ever been that afraid. It just depends on whose side you want to be on. That's a lot of us told you people are not going to listen to the leaders. So I, don't, I have a problem today with political leaders that scared of another political leader. Amen. I ain't got nothing good to say about you. Nothing. Because if you go against God for a man, you deserve to die. Physically and in hell. Because you're not a man. And you're not a woman. Because you know who your leader should be to. I've been afraid before. Not no more. Because the worst they can do is kill you. That's worse. That's best. At, or torture you. You know you can only touch somebody so long and then you die. After a while, you just die. That's the way it is. So remember that, brother. Don't be afraid of me and nobody else on earth that's in sin. And sin, rebuke. You got some brethren, man, they, they're they ready to kiss the feet of a preacher. Ready to kiss the feet of an elder, a deacon. Bible teacher. Just can't tell him, brother, you're wrong. The scriptures do not say verbatim what you're saying. I don't respect no man like that. I'm telling you, brother. Looking at Saul, your head going to get cut off spiritually by the Lord. And so, look what happened. And the king said to do it, turned off all part of the priest. You're an Edomite anyway. You don't like Jews. And do it, the Edomite is turned and he fell upon him. Now watch. watch the list of killings. Watch this now. Watch what this fool is going to do. See, this is a fool here. Once, let me tell you something about life. If you let a fool loose on some saints, he's going to do much more than you ask. Be careful. He fell upon the priests, as I asked that, and slew on that day four score, 85 persons. That's 85 persons that did well. Let him eat for 85 priests. And now the city of the priest, that's why the tabernacle was there. That's why we have to prove to you it was there. Smoke, he with the edge of the sword, both men and women. So he killed a women and children. Do you see this fool? Y'all see this? And suckling babies. Here is Saul. And he can't say, well, I know what he did. No, no, no. Don't turn a fool loose on the saints. And oxen? What did the animal do? And asses? And sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the, soul, the Lord's priest. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasion the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide with me, fear not. For he that seeketh my life, seeketh thy life. But with me thou shalt be in safe God. Brethren, this, this now, from this point, the tabernacle is going to be set up and given. As we read, we've already proved it. It, it moves. And we know one thing, ain't no more human beings there to work in it because the city been killed. Now, but nobody brought in there to work no more. It was moved. So, brethren, I want to tell you something about the church of Christ so you'll know. You got murderers, spiritual murderers all in it. And they only get to kill so many people spiritually. You might be right by them on the run, but you're in the same building. Moving about. I know how to sit in other gatherings of other churches of Christ. And no, I'm by a killer right now. But if he breathe wrong, I'm going to gut him right there with my mouth. He better not say nothing but, hey, brother, amen, and get out the way. Because I'm not scared of you. I'm telling you, but I know what you're about. I don't know. You can be the greatest among men, but I know you're not good 
You're no good. And you better not never approach me spiritually. Better say hi and goodbye. Two words I would have said hi and goodbye. Because I know you're no good. And I'm going to call your name out. Tell the God of heaven, say, take his breath. It's time for him to leave. Because I don't like you. Because you don't like Jesus. I got nothing good to say about you. But if you change your filthy, vile ways, you hear nothing but praise from God and from me. Because I can see, I see the angel with the sword. And I'm not scared to go to the temple. But you better be. And you know. Speaking of those type of people. So brethren, we understand now why adjustments were made. We can see things are changed up. Not a wicked king. David takes over. He, he's allowed to bring the ark into the city of David. Because God said that's what I want. Although it's separate from the tabernacle now. That's fine. They're still going to go up there and make sacrifice. That's how I want it. Peace is in the land now. It's in the city where it needs to be. Because this is the city of the king. That's where it needs to be. Because a temple is going to be built there permanently. So we don't need no mobile tabernacle of Moses anymore after that. So now we've got a good understanding of what we have before us. Brethren, recognize all throughout God moves on mistakes you make, adjust. Then he moves things that you're not worthy to have anymore. Then he removes you. You make the call. This is the greatest of all the battles that exist among men. The fight for your soul. Your soul. You got to fight for your soul. You speak that which is in the scriptures. If the Bible is silent, put tape on your mouth. The Bible speak, rip off the tape and cry loud, watchman, to let people know. Whatever people think about you don't mean nothing to me because you're just no good. That's how you got to have you. You're just no good. You teach false, you live false. And it doesn't matter what you suffer who talks about you. It doesn't matter. Because through all this, God lifts up David, keeps him alive and drops him right in the midst. And then when his wife, Michelle Toscre, punishes her. Because he says, like he said about Moses, I picked David. What you think about him don't mean nothing to me. You gotta understand that, brother. He picked Jesus. What we think about him don't mean nothing to the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. See, we can read these, but boy, you got to read these with faith, man, I tell you. You know, one of the biggest things, I'm going to show you one of the biggest powers that exist among men is this. I want to show you one of the biggest powers that exist among men. When something's going on spiritually and somebody does this, when it starts getting hot, get up and walk. Let him walk. But you know, other people, why are you leaving? Why? That's because you're weak. you just weak. you just weak. you Operate off emotion and emotion instead of the word of God. Praise God. By delivering you first of all that which all shall receive. How did Christ die for our sins according to the scripture? That he was buried. Rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He was seen as Cephas. Then the twelve goes through the list. Now watch this. Mark 16. Verse 15. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Every creature. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. He that believes and not shall be damned. That word that means condemned, cursed. They can put any word they want there. And Greek is going to always mean the same thing. You're going to Hades. Look at Acts 2.36. Now, the Lord of Hosea is going to assure that God had made the same Jesus who crucified both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were pricked their hearts, had the peace of the rest of the past. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, and run in the name of Jesus Christ. For a mission saying that you shall see the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? For the promise unto you, to your children, to all that are far. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Men of the word, the testimony of God, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that glad to receive were baptized. The same day were added to them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfast in their apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. Look at Acts 247. Praise God. I have favor with all the people in the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be said. Here goes a powerful politician 
that love the Lord God Almighty. Man, I love this Ethiopian union. We don't even know his name. Acts 8.35, then Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. Powerful politician. Treasurer of the whole nation of Ethiopian money. Ethiopian was a bad nation. Man, they was powerful. They had Israel shaking in the boots one for the law. But Nebuchadnezzar whooped him. Because God said, I'm going to let him whoop everybody. But they're powerful. And they have a lot of money at this time. And he's watching. But he's in Jerusalem coming back. And that's amazing. Because he's a great politician. But he loves the Lord. Different politician. Different. And all of them need to love the Lord the right way like this guy. Don't tell me it can't be done. And you can't be a politician. Don't tell me. You just don't want to act right. That's the problem. You don't want to act right. He says, as they went away, they came to certain water, and the eunuch said, See, his water was him to me to be baptized. Philip said, If I believe with all the heart, thou mayest he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Not like the Muslims. See, I'm not a politician, so I call our names. I'm not trying to win nothing. My service to the law, I got paid when I got baptized. Paid in full. Like the song say, paid in full. He commanded tried to stand still and went down both to the water, but Philip and the unit, and he baptized me. First Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, for the Jews and Gentile bond and free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Will it save me? First Peter 3, 21, the like figure, when to even baptisms also now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience taught God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's gone into heaven on the right hand of God, angel, authority, and powers, being made subject unto him. Revelation 2, 10, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Should we worry? No. Fear not of those things without yourself. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You shall tribulation 10 days, be thou faithful unto death. I will give thee a crown of life. You need to be baptized, stay standing. You need prayer, stay standing. Raise your hand, you listen to the message. Touch a little V shape. Audrey, brother Javier, yeah, free to shut up. But you can call, preventing you from murdering your children. Call the number, we'll tell you what to do. Murdering your spouse, don't do it. Call the number. Running away from home, don't do it. Don't divorce. Call, it will talk to you. When we were at the funeral, there we had a lot of politicians talking about Jesus Christ. But only the saints said it right. Amen. Come now together, we stand and sing Elvis' invitation. Have you been to Jesus? Oh, the Are you Are you fully trusting in His grace?